What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and I've been messing around further with the chassis design I released last weekend. Because while it's kind of got around that big problem of wheeled vehicles on planets, which is they're just too fragile and too slow really to have any practical purpose, the design I then released with it was not practical in the slightest. No one really needs a race tank, believe it or not. So I kind of went back to it again and thought, why don't I try the mobile planetary base idea one more time, but from a slightly different approach? Because one thing that was always a flaw with the mobile planetary bases, and I've done two of them now, the second one obviously much better than the first as it came out after planets, was trees. Trees are vicious to large ships. So this was a small ship chassis. Could we maybe get around that problem by using this to start a mobile planetary base? So what I have in front of me here is by far the most pretty thing in the world, but it's my solution for this so far, and I'm really kind of pleased with how it's turned out, at least from a functionality side of things. So what we're going to do is have a quick tour of this, show you how it performs, which is arguably even more ridiculous than the chassis and the race tank did. How that's even possible, I don't know, although I do have a theory about it. And then at the end, I'm going to show you quickly how you can actually make this in survival, because as soon as we take a look here, you'll see why it might be a bit tricky. So you've probably noticed already, this ship's half large ship and half small ship. And basically what I've done, if we go over to one of these copies, these are sort of stages of building, is position kind of all the components you might need from a large ship onto this using landing gear and a connector. Now, I'm not sure whether the landing gear are technically needed, especially since the connector locking update we had this week. But they certainly give me a bit more peace of mind, and they can be useful when you haven't hooked the connector up yet. Then, gone from there, I just went and tried to build up a chassis around it. So this is it, mostly done, mostly finished. And you can see how I've kind of tried to tuck the small ship blocks around. And the end result is what we've got down here. So we're going to have a quick tour of the interior, because that gives you a much better idea of what's actually going on. So jump up into the back. Access, again, this is designed to be survival ready, even though it's quite a complex design. So everything in here should be... A, piped up correctly, but B, things like accessible from the ground without needing to use your jetpack. So what I haven't been able to do, of course, is seal this with oxygen. That would be too difficult trying to combine the two grids together. But what I have kind of achieved, and I'm kind of pleased with, is create a sort of an interior that contains, obviously we've got assemblers, we've got refineries, we've got the modules on those to increase their output. Our roof is made out of large ship solar panels, so those things can really boost our power input. And then we've got a med bay and the usual bits and bobs. So we've got oxygen generation, although no vents. This would be designed, the med bay is piped up. So you'd use this, say, on an alien planet where you don't have any oxygen with your suit the whole time. You'd go and refill from the med bay, or perhaps you'd refill from bottles and produce bottles out of your oxygen generators. That sort of thing. And then there's not a huge amount else in here. I like the fact that I've been able to use the large ship interior lights to actually light everything up here. And the important part is this is all vanilla, don't forget. No mods in use whatsoever. We've got a little bit of cargo access on the floor, and then we've got access to our cockpit, and we've got a screen and a programming block should you want to put on any sort of cargo management facilities, for example. So rather than actually drive you around, because to be honest, that means that we go through a lot of quite boring terrain, and occasionally I screw up as well because it's kind of hard to record and talk at the same time and do everything as you want to. I'm going to kind of talk over the top of some pre-recorded footage so that you guys get an idea of this in the most extreme situations I could put it through. Because it's pretty ridiculous. Now I have had to make a pretty substantial change to the suspension settings. Because it's got a lot heavier and the weight it reports in game, which is about 180 tonnes, is just incorrect. Wildly incorrect. Something about the way the grids connect together means that the weight's reported wrong. But it's also had a knock-on effect, which is super duper positive, which is that the entire ship seems to have been counted as a small grid, which means that when you collide with trees, they don't damage anything, it, to ridiculous levels of not damaging anything, which can only be a really big positive for something like this. Obviously, trees are a big problem. The other thing that it seems to have worked out quite nicely by having the higher suspension settings, and admittedly this has made it pretty bouncy, is that if you steer right at the rocks, you can ride over the top of them now, rather than having to plough through them. So that's all very beneficial. Now, as hopefully you can see from here, it's capable of taking a stupid pounding. I don't understand how it's not breaking. I don't understand why the landing gear aren't making it explode. The connector isn't coming flying off. 
but it just doesn't. And what that, I think, results in is something that's pretty damn efficient as a mobile base. Now, the one thing it doesn't have that I would probably want to add if I was to sort of revamp this, and I think there's a good place to do it on the back behind that window, is to put a connector on so you can hook up external ships that were coming along with you. You quite easily have a mining craft that you lock down on the top, which is nice and flat, but you need some way of unloading that. So I'd probably have a connector hanging off the back just to facilitate things in that regards. The one thing I kind of forgot to do with it, but otherwise, hey, I'm pretty damn pleased. And the way it flies and jumps, you've got to be aware in the air. If you're holding down W, so you're making the wheels spin, something about the power settings actually means the wheels will pull you around in the air. So it helps to let go and let the thing fly. The other thing that really helps is to give it good gyro control. So the front sort of impact riding wheels, if they hit the ground first and you get it nicely on that angle, it kind of mitigates the impact even more, flicks the back end down, and you can take full 350 kilometer an hour impacts if you do it right. So there you go, it's a pretty simple setup, but I'm liking how this suspension system seems to have worked quite nicely to expand to other tasks as well. I know there have been some people mentioning in the Steam group and on the, uh, the thread for it on the workshop, and don't forget that will all be linked down in the video description as usual, that they've managed to get it to carry like 1.5 million tons and stuff like that. It's like, okay, that's totally mind-blowing, what on earth? So that's all well and good. Now it's about making it in survival, because that was the point of... So I need to interrupt Thursday me, because this was all recorded on Thursday, ready for the Saturday release, like it was supposed to be for the first of the Space Engineers scheduled videos. And then what you can see in the background started happening. Basically, the wheels just fall off at random. And it could even happen when it's stationary. There are no criteria for when it happens, as far as I can work out. It just seems to be some sort of desync to do with the new add wheel functionality, perhaps. Maybe something to do with the client side stuff. It's just a bit odd. You'll be driving along and then off come your wheels. So for the time being, this has a bit of an issue, but I am absolutely confident that this is a bug and a bug that will be fixed pretty soon. So I felt I needed to kind of show you the reality of things with this design at the moment, but hey, hopefully it gets fixed pretty soon. I figured it wouldn't hurt to publish the video anyway, because it will get fixed, I'm sure of it. And so back to the original recording. So that's all and good. Now it's about making it in survival, because that was the point of this thing. So we're just quickly going to jump back to where we began, because I've got a little demonstration set up about how we can actually make this in survival. Now, of course, this is going to be difficult. It's not a straightforward sort of way of putting things together, but I think it might potentially be worth it if you can make something that's this durable and this mobile. So around the other side of this wall here, we have how I propose to actually set this thing up. So what I've done is basically think ahead about what I want to have large ship wise and I've built them onto the side of a wall here. Now the one thing I haven't put on because it's important to note that you'll need this is this bit actually needs to be powered to start off with otherwise this connector won't connect to anything it has no power. So I'm in creative of course just to make things nice and quick but all of this would be doable in survival. So what we're going to do is slap down a reactor to power this grid. And then here we've got our frame. So that initial frame, we've built this up. And I have admittedly built on a little section on the back to kind of align where I think the connector is going to be. We can kind of look at the frame, look at the thing on the wall and go, yeah, that looks about where it's going to set up. But this isn't necessary. All you really need is the landing gear. Now, all we really need to do is jump in our cockpit here, get a better point of view, and we're going to go and basically just reverse underneath it. Now, the first thing is to get as close to the wall as we can. So let's try and get ourselves in a decent position. This thing doesn't like steering particularly well when it's this light. It's weird. It like, prefers being heavier or just moving a bit faster. But we're going to get it nice and tight into the wall. That looks pretty good. And then we're going to work out pretty quickly that our landing gear don't fit underneath because we're too high up on our suspension. So next step is to go in, remember our settings in here. So 45.8, so about minus 46 for our main wheels. And then our impact wheels were minus 25. Let's select both of those and we're just going to turn our height offset down slowly so that we don't bounce around too much to say minus 20, to 20 like that. So this way we are now 
much, much lower to the ground. Now, I'd never recommend using this suspension like this. It will just break. It will bottom out so easily. But what you can now do is just slide yourself underneath the thing on the wall. So we've got everything built up now. What have we got stuck on here? Okay, so I'm not quite going straight enough or I'm a bit too far in. So let's see if we can wiggle our way out. I'm actually perhaps thinking about it. Some of the landing gear have locked. Nope, I've just got us a bit stuck. So it looks like good that this happened now, I suppose. So I can show all we're going to do is just lower ourselves a bit further. That's helped. Now, I think it was the connector getting stuck on the other connector, which is a good sign. It means we've lined ourselves up really well. Oh, no, apparently not. So you can see now what we need to do is just line ourselves up. The connector is actually going to pull us into place, which is good. It'll help align us perfectly. And that's going to do a little bit of bouncing. But while that does so, we can go underneath and just check that everything's lined up nicely on the landing gear. See that we're good and straight above. So we come in at a nice angle. Don't really want to connect it now at a funny angle and then later down the line go, oh God, why didn't I just check that and do it a bit better? So that all looks pretty perfect. So from here, everything's very simple. Now, the one thing you've got to remember with this vehicle, and it's a big problem, I think with basically space engineers, I can't claim it's a problem with this vehicle. It's just how space engineers chooses to do things. But if we go in here, go to our cockpit and put on the bar handbrake on off, this is not just going to turn the handbrake on off. It's going to turn the parking, it's going to turn the landing gears on and off, and it's going to lock the connectors as if we pressed P. I don't know why it works like this, but you have to be aware. You really can't use the handbrake on this design, unfortunately. But what we can now do is you can see there on the screen, landing gears locked, connectors, connectors enabled. I, I didn't ask you to do that. I asked you to turn the handbrake on. But anyway, the one flaw that I can't really work around. But you can see this is all now nicely connected up. That's hooked together. Down under here, our landing gear are attached as well. So we can now get rid of, grind down this power. It could be in a battery form. It could be a solar panel. Your solar panel is probably the best because it only needs a tiny bit of power for that connector. And you don't lose any materials with solar panels when you break them back down again. Take that off. You'll see this remains power because it's now getting power from our frame. And then, obviously, we're in creative, but in survival, we would just grind down this wall. And I actually built it. I built it much bigger than it needed to be so that you guys couldn't see what was behind here at the start of the video. But... There we go, and she's now fitted quite nicely onto that frame. Everything's good. Now, we do have the slight issue of our handbrake still. Now, the only way really to get around this, because our handbrake is on, we can't drive at the moment, is to go into your G menu, find the connector that's actually on board your side and the landing gear that are on your side and get ready to lock them as you change things. So in this case, our connector is connector 4, so we want switch lock and we'd also perhaps make a group for those landing gear because it is a bit of an issue that the handbrake works like that. So we've got LG group. Hopefully this doesn't mess up. I did do this earlier, but it's the sort of thing that you can just be sure when I actually want to do it now live, it's going to mess me around. But let's just get a little bit of a good look. Now it should sit quite nicely. The camera's messing me around. It should sit quite nicely on those landing gear anyway. So we're just going to turn that off and turn those all on. And unfortunately, she has slightly moved. Now we can use space obviously to stop ourselves anyway. But you can see we're actually sitting ever so slightly in the air, which is not ideal. Bit of a pain. Perhaps what we could have done is actually do the handbrake procedure a bit better. The way I'd correct this now is by turning up the connection force here. So actually making these things really strong because what they'll do is help pull. And remember, they both need to be on the same setting. It uses the weakest of the two forces. But we can use that connector now to actually pull the refinery into the position we want. So I've got the landing gear off. We can turn the connector onto ready to lock, and we can actually now go in here and try and There we go. You can see it pulled it straight. Everything's sitting nicely, and we can now lock both. Brilliant. And then from there, all you've got to do is build it up. Now, you'll notice it's trying to roll around at the moment. That's because our wheel settings are still set wrong, and they're kind of interfering with the thing on top. So all we need to do now is remember to go back in here, remember what our settings were. So do this gently so you don't launch yourself into the sky. So minus 25 was what the impact wheels were on, and then the main wheels were obviously higher than that. So we get these up to it's about 45.8, if I remember rightly. And now... 
you can see we can stop the vehicle and it will, for the most part, stay stopped. So let's uh, just drive off of this bit of platform because I bet you that's part of our problem at the moment. I've actually positioned the med bay wrong. So you'll notice in the other design, the main design, the med bay isn't in quite in that place. It is like that because it interferes a bit with the wheels for some reason. I have no idea why, it just seems to. There you go guys, mobile planetary base, Mark III. Pretty pleased with it as a creative mode tool and it is just about creatable in survival as well. So I would say good on you if you do actually manage to make this in survival. I just wanted to present an idea that I knew could be. You know, it's very all well and good saying, mobile planetary base, look, you can drive around and refine all your ore and so on. When, in reality, if you're playing in creative, why on earth would you want to go and refine some ore? It would be so pointless. So, yep, there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, as always, please hit like, please hit subscribe. I'm just going to dive in the back of here so you can see the internal layout here. The main difference was I got the med bay wrong. It needs to be at that height, like I did the second time, but everything else you can see is exactly the same as that one and all sits quite nicely and as you can see with this even though it's for some reason floating off the ground it is not moving around and neither is that one now i've got the med bay in the right place so anyway, thanks a lot for watching guys if you did like please hit like please hit subscribe it does really help me in the channel out and if you didn't like it let me know down in the comments how can i improve what can i do better so that you enjoy the videos more thanks a lot for watching guys and i will catch you next time